The Arizona Fall League season has concluded, and Major League Baseball has handed out all of the major awards. Pitcher of the Year, Hitter of the Year, MVP. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer and podcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And congratulations to the surprise Segueros. They walked off Glendale 7-6 in 11 innings on Saturday night to win the AFL Championship. Longest game in AFL postseason history. Uh, Scott Schreiber was the MVP with a single to the left center field gap. Uh, fantastic Fantastic game, thoroughly enjoyed it, and a great uh, fall league season. And MLB gave out their official awards. Uh, so let's start with the pitchers. And I'm not going to start with pitcher of the year because we ha- they also have a relief pitcher of the year. And I want to talk about Evan Reifert of the Rays. He put up what may be statistically the most dominant season in Arizona fall league history, okay? So 11 and two-thirds innings. One hit, zero earned runs, and 40 at-bats. 25 strikeouts to four walks. So whip of 0.43. Of the 40 batters, 25 strikeouts, so 62.5% strikeout rate. And not only is this a record, this is kind of like the gap between Aaron Judge and everybody else in home runs this year. The previous record... In the Arizona Fall League, minimum of 40 batters faced was 49% strikeout rate. Uh, Evan Reifert goes out there and gets 62.5%. Batting average against, 0.028, also an Arizona Fall League record. And so, Evan Reifert, with this performance, has gone from a prospect, you know, a guy, to a dude. Uh, 2020 undrafted free agent by the Brewers. Don't let an undrafted guy freak you out if it's 2020. Remember, only five rounds. And so a lot of players who entered the league in 2020 were undrafted. Uh, Was traded to the Rays after 2021 in a straight-up swap for third baseman Mike Brousseau. Went to high A Bowling Green to open the year. Finished up with a brief stint, like three innings, in double-A Montgomery. And I expect Reifert to go back to double-A Montgomery uh, this upcoming season. With Depending on how it goes in 23, you're looking at he might actually make it to the big league level the back half of the, of the 23 season. And if not, probably 24. Fastball slider guy is what he does. And fastball is kind of firm. It's in the mid-90s. It's fine. But the slider is the real star here. It's a plus slider high spin. He can throw it out of the strike zone for some chase. He can land it in the strike zone for a strike and has done some some good work to fix a little bit of the control stuff that came up in 2021 in high A Wisconsin for the Brewers. Uh, One of the changes that the Rays actually made wasn't for Evan. It was for his catchers and they said, hey, set up in the middle of the plate. Give him a target in the middle of the plate. Don't try to to set up outside and have him come towards the edge. Set up middle of the plate and let Evan have that target to see when he throws. Now, he may, he may be aiming for the edge of the plate and you can always move out and get it. But just set up middle-middle, give him a nice big target, and let him go to work. And uh, much better walks wise and things like that this year than he had been in the past. So it looks like that that control's gotten, you know, gotten gotten better. Probably going to be something he's always going to work on a little bit, but other than that, great year for Evan Reifert, especially in Arizona, and I I I think Evan Reifert can now clearly be considered a dude. Uh, I expect him probably to break the back half of the top 30 for the Rays just cuz the Rays have so many prospects. This is such a good system and hopefully some trades that come down the pipe as we get to Tuesday afternoon's uh, 40-man roster deadline help clear some space so that 
uh, it's really easy for him to not only make the top 30, but get a decent spot in the top 30. The pitcher of the year for the Arizona Fall League pretty much always goes to a starter. Uh, in this case, it went to Connor Thomas of the Cardinals. 2019 fifth rounder out of Georgia Tech and started six games in the Fall League, was 1-0. and And quick clarifier here, uh, guys don't go very deep in the Fall League. There were zero quality starts in the Fall League this year. Uh, the leaders in wins had like three wins. And so it's rare to even see a dude go deep enough in the game to earn a win as far as going five innings as a starter. So, Connor Thomas, 1-0, 175 ERA in 25 and two-thirds innings. Had 34 strikeouts to five walks. So, 11.9 strikeouts per nine. To the five walks is 1.75 walks per nine. Didn't allow a single home run. And... This is kind of, this is a much better performance than what we saw in AAA Memphis from Connor Thomas. Struggled a little bit there. 28 games, started 25 of those. 6 and 12, 5 4 7 ERA. Threw 135 innings with 110 strikeouts to 40 walks. Uh, gave up 16 home runs. Connor Thomas' whole game, his whole thing is he's a ground ball pitcher. He's got plus command, above average control. He throws two separate fastballs, a four-seamer and a two-seamer. I like the two-seamer better than the four-seamer. Uh, they boast at around 90-91, which for a lefty we know isn't amazing velocity. Uh, slider is plus and the change-up's above average. But the idea here with the slider and the two-seamer is you're looking to induce ground ball contact. During the regular season, during the AAA season, uh, he got about two ground balls for every fly ball. In the AFL, he cranked that up to about 3.3 ground balls per fly ball uh, and, you know, and led the league in strikeouts. So I don't quite know exactly where Connor Thomas is. He's, I think he's better than the Memphis AAA numbers. Maybe he's not as elite as the AFL numbers, but either way, uh, he's got a 40-man roster decision coming up on Tuesday. I expect him to get protected. And something where I think he's shown that at the very least he can contribute in a long relief role, a spot start kind of guy back into your, you know, uh, uh, somebody in your bullpen kind of thing who can flex and give you innings whenever you need them. Um, that was his second straight year of throwing at least 125 innings and is just a guy who's going to be able to pitch for you and help out at the major league level. In just a minute. I want to get to some of the hitters. We had some uh, some fantastic offensive performances. You've probably heard all of these names, especially when it comes to the Hitters of the Week awards that we were giving out. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. you got football, both college and pro. You've got basketball, both college and pro. You've got soccer, you've got esports. Out of the World Cup starts, I think, next week. So they're going to have everything at betaline.net. Uh, it is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You'll also find fun stuff for baseball as far as World Series odds for next year, free agency information, where guys might go, things like that. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because Bet Online is where the game starts. Okay, so when we're looking at the top hitters in the Arizona Fall League, uh, you're going to recognize most of these names. The The offensive player of the year was outfielder Zach Veen of the Rockies. Depending on who you ask, either the number one or number two prospect in the system, him and Ezekiel Tovar, we had him as one of our top five outfielders in our best outfielders in minor league baseball show we did earlier in the year. And the 21 games that he played in the Arizona Fall League, 333, 444, 444. One home run, seven extra base hits, 15 walks to eight strikeouts, and the 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 big thing, 16 of 18 on stolen bases. Led the Arizona Fall League in stolen bases, and only three guys even hit double digits for stolen bases. So Zach Veen didn't necessarily lap the field, but was significant. I think he won it by three. I want to say that the top three guys were 16, 13, and 10. And he struggled in double A a bit this year. When he got to, you know, he, he was in 
Uh, high A Spokane for about 90 games. Looked good. 269, 368, 439. 50 of 54 on stolen bases. Uh, 33 extra base hits. I mean, had a good year there. And then when he went to Double A Hartford, again, Double A is usually the biggest jump within the minors. Got about 30 games, just over a month, about five weeks worth. 177, 262, 234. One home run, five extra base hits. The uh, the power never really manifested, was 5 of 10 on stolen bases, so he got caught a lot more often than he was used to. And something where all of the tools are there. Uh, it takes a little bit of an adjustment for some players when they make that move to double A. And I, it, it's something where the pitching is so much better usually in double A than in low A or high A. So I absolutely get it. And looking at what he did in the Arizona Fall League, walks were higher than the strikeouts. Batting average was good. You're in a situation where the defense is real. The tools are real. And the abilities there. There's a couple things he has to work on. Uh, one of them is just kind of shortening the swing. 6'5", 200. It's not necessarily a lever issue. He just has a lot of parts in his swing. And it's a, it just a, takes a little bit to get the bat into the zone. Shortening that up a bit is going to be helpful for him. And then using the whole field. Uh, a lot of his power was pull side. Most of it, I felt like, was, was pull side. And so just being... Being able to send stuff the other the other way and use more of the field, I think, is going to help him offensively. And depending on how these adjustments go in Hartford next year with the Yard Goats, I can see two different outcomes for Zach Veen. Kind of your low your low end outcome for Zach Veen. Again, assuming he makes the major leagues, we're just working off the assumption that he will. Uh, the your low end projections, kind of a high batting average guy who's a 15-15. 15, 15. 15 home runs, 15 stolen bases, and gives you above average defense in a corner. Uh, the thing is, his speed is probably his lowest rated tool, and it's average. Uh, he gets so many steals because he has a great sense of timing and understanding of when he can run, things like that. And so I see on the low end, you're looking at above average defense in a corner because you don't have that elite top end speed. On the high end, you're looking at a high batting average 30-15, maybe 30-20 guy who's contending for all-star games. Uh, plus arm, I can see him being out in right field and just you know absolutely gunning somebody down at second, trying to stretch a single into a double. Uh, getting the timing down of the pitchers should allow him to have more success than 50% at stolen bases. So a little bit of, of variance in the projection here, but... Zach Veen very much showed in the Arizona Fall League that those tools are real. The defense is real. The arm is real. Uh, the contact ability is real. And the power is getting better. Uh, he is definitely better than what he showed in AA Hartford last year. Breakout player of the year in the Arizona Fall League. Stop me if you've heard about this guy before. Second baseman Edward Julian of the Twins. Uh, we have talked about the Canadian prospect God of Walks for seemingly just about every single week of the entire Arizona Fall League season. Finished up his 21 games, 400, 563, 686. Best batting average in the Fall League. Best on base percentage in the Fall League. Second best slugging percentage in the Fall League. Uh, which gives him an OPS of like 1249, which was best in the Fall League. Uh, five home runs, 10 extra base hits. 23 walks in 21 games to 22 strikeouts with 6-6 six six on stolen bases. Never really necessarily known for his speed. So not getting thrown out is coming kind of nice to see from Edward Julian in the Fall League. Uh, again, strikeouts were a little bit higher than you'd like, but walks were higher than the strikeouts. So it's, it's hard to be mad about that. And again, play second base, but as an offensive first player, this is all real. Edward Julian is a dude. He is not a he is not a guy. He is a dude, and I expect him next year to probably do double A, triple A, or straight to triple A next year. We'll see, we'll kind of see what the what the Twins decide to do there. But absolutely a guy that for an 18th rounder, you cannot be upset about what you've gotten out of Edward Julian because he looks like a, a guy who absolutely can't help your big league team. Defensive. Player of the Year. Not a hitter award, but still a position player, so we're going to talk about it. Outfielder Luis Matos of the Giants. 
And it was something where it played center field, 22 games, very good reads and routes and reactions. The games I was able to catch with him in there, I didn't. I saw him taking quality first steps, getting very effective routes, very efficient routes, not a lot of extra wasted running, didn't have any errors, two outfield assists. It's something where he was... He was a 2018 IFA. I think they signed him for about 725 or so. And top, I'd say probably top three, top four prospect in the system. Uh, you're looking at, I, I would assume, a 2024 debut. I've seen, I think MLB Pipeline has him as debuting in 23, but he didn't get out of high A in 23. So it's, to me, it seems to me a little bit early to call him a 23 debut. But, um, in, in in high A, 211, 275, 344 was the slash line over 91 games, 65 strikeouts to 27 walks. Uh, in the fall league, looked, you know, looked kind of around the same. Uh, 233, 280, 360 in those 22 games. Two home runs, six extra base hits, five walks to 20 strikeouts, and one for three in stolen bases. Again, gives you a high floor of very good defense in center field. The question's going to be just kind of um, waiting on on the power to come in. I think he's probably going to end up below average to average. We'll see where he finishes there. Part of that's just limitations of size. He's about 5'11", uh, 160 to 165 right now. You can add a little bit more to that, but not a ton. He's above average speed, so if that comes down, that's really going to hurt the defense. Uh, it, and the base running. So you kind of have to walk that fine line of physical development. We're adding healthy healthy weight and muscle without losing top end speed. Uh, But a guy that I'd probably give an above average hit tool to and just kind of waiting to see how he develops. Probably just going to need a little bit more time than some other guys will. Again, I have him as a 24 guy versus a 23 guy like MLB Pipeline and some other places. And just a minute... I want to get to the Sportsmanship Award and then the MVP of the Arizona Fall League right here on Locked on MLB Prospects. And we're back. So, we've already given out uh, Offensive Player of the Year, Relief Pitcher and Starting Pitcher of the Year, Breakout Player of the Year. The last couple of awards, the first one is the Darnell Stinson Sportsmanship Award. Uh, This award is named for an AFL prospect who actually was... Uh, shot and killed during the AFL season ab- about 15 years ago. They named the award after him after that happened. Uh, but the winner this year is outfielder and first baseman Lawrence Butler of the Oakland A's. Guys, we uh, a guy we talked about entering the Arizona Fall League as somebody who had the potential to improve his stock. I had him as one of the better power hitters in the Oakland A's system now that Shea Langoliers is no longer a prospect. And... In the Arizona Fall League season, over 19 games, 241, 389, 444, two home runs, six extra base hits, 10 walks to 11 strikeouts, and went four or five on stolen bases. So, reminder about him, he was a he was a 2018 sixth rounder out of high school. He's rated in the uh, top half of the, uh, he, he's rated right around 13 to 15 or so, so top half of the top 30. Got 81 games. In high A last year, 270, 357, 468, 11 home runs, 33 extra base hits, 40 walks to 105 strikeouts, 13 to 18 on stolen bases. So strikeouts are still a little high, right? But definitely has the raw tools to hit for plus power. He's 6'4". He does have a little bit of that long lever issue where there's just a lot of a lot of stuff between his shoulders and and the bat, trying to get the bat into the zone. But that swing, despite it being a little bit long, does have very good natural loft to it. It's a very, it's a natural power swing. He's trying to shorten it down a little bit, the actual mechanics of it. But the angle of it, you know, the launch angle, the approach angle, very good. Uh, Very good bat speed, and the exit velos are fantastic. I mean, he, he routinely puts up max exit velos of 110, 112, things like that. So, so long swing, he can get swings and misses, strikeout rates a little bit high, but the raw tools are there to be good. He can play all three outfield positions, or he has played in the past. I like him better in a corner than center. He plays first base as well. 
He's athletic enough to make a left or right field work. And then, and the reason he won the award is he's just, the mental makeup is there. Very, uh, very, he's competitive, but not, not to a detriment, not to a negative. Really good makeup, takes coaching well, puts in extra work, is one of those guys that helps bridge the gap between uh, position players and pitchers or Latin guys and American guys, that kind of stuff. Uh, just very good in the clubhouse and very, very good as a competitor. And that's why he won the Sportsmanship Award. The MVP in this year's Arizona Fall League was outfielder Heston Kierstad of the Orioles. We talked about him a couple weeks ago on the show. Uh, first rounder by the, the Orioles who lost all of 2021 to inflammation of the heart muscle. Didn't get any physical activity in at all. And so very much had to kind of work on rebuilding the musculature, getting back into uh, shape and hitting for power again. Was a number two overall pick in 2020 out of the University of Arkansas. 6'3", 205 is about where he is now, as I've been told. But 22 games in the Fall League. 357, 385, 622. Five home runs, 15 extra base hits, five walks to 31 strikeouts. So you're still seeing some of the effects of the rust on the timing. It was kind of similar to what we saw in 2022 during the regular season in in A and high A, where he played 65 games and struck out about 64 times. Like some of the same stuff as far as timing not necessarily being perfectly back yet, but led the Arizona Fall League in total bases with 61, was top five in batting average, was top five in slugging, was top five in home runs, top five in RBI. It's just really a situation where Hessen Kierstad showed that he was deserving of a top five overall pick and looks to be most of the way recovered from, in essence, losing two full years. Because very abbreviated 2020, remember the college season was canceled right around March, and then losing 2021 to not only something that didn't allow him to play, something that didn't allow him to practice. So developmentally a little bit behind where he needs to be, but definitely showing that the tools are there, the ability is there. You're just working on fine-tuning some of the stuff and getting him back into the proper form. Couple, real quick, couple statistical standouts from the Arizona Fall League. Your home run leaders, you had two guys that were tied. Uh, New York Yankees third baseman Tyler Hardman, talked about him on the show. He won one of the weekly awards. As well as Chicago Cubs first baseman Matt Mervis, both finished with six. Uh, Mervis is the one I'm going to be watching as we enter next year. There's a little bit of outside conversation that Matt Mervis may, at the very least, get invited to spring training and have an opportunity to compete for the opening day roster. There's been some rumors that the uh, Cubs want to sign Jose Abreu, and so if they do, the fit for Matt Mervis becomes a little more questionable. You wonder about if they would DH Abreu or have him play primary first base. If he's the primary first baseman, Mervis probably is in the minors to get everyday playing time. Uh, Your triples leaders. There was two guys with three. Atlanta shortstop Cal Conley. And Miami Marlins outfielder Victor Mesa both had three. And then innings pitched. You'll remember that pitchers don't go very deep in the Arizona Fall League. Uh, starting pitcher Connor Van Sayak of the Angels had seven starts, which was an AFL, tops in the AFL this year, and 26 innings pitched. So all in all, it was a great Arizona Fall League. It's fun to get to watch these games uh, on, on MLB.com. I love that they live stream all of them as well as the triple header that takes place from Chase Field, the Home Run Derby, the All-Star Game, and the Championship. Though I love that those are all streamed and you can watch all of those games. Uh, reminder, if you have questions for the show, our mailbags are on Monday. You can send questions to me. I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. The show is on Twitter at Locked On Farm. Or you can email us, LockedOnMLBProspects at gmail.com. If you're on video and you've made it this far in the video, thank you for sticking around. Do us a favor and like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help a ton. If you've made it this far in audio, go out to the podcast app of your choice. Leave us a review. It does mean the world to me uh, so that we can know what you like and don't like and how we can make this show better. Uh, until tomorrow's show, this has been Locked on MLB Prospects. <laughs>